for us tonight. It's good to have Joanne and went with us and uh, the daughter there. So let's everybody get in the song service tonight.
about God's sweet heaven in my view, oh hallelujah, and I'm on my way.
been saved all day and I'm glad and I'm glad that I've been saved all day but when I'm going to really be glad that I'm saved is when I come down at the end of this life when I face the Lord and I hear him say well done now. without our family we can still make it anything in this world that we have we can give up because making it to heaven is the most important thing in my life sometimes it gets to be a hard struggle but the end result is what counts. You may have a big time down here and think you're having fun, but when you lay on your deathbed, if you're conscious, it's going to be something different. You would be willing at that time to trade every second of your life, everything that you've ever owned, if you could get a glimpse of glory, but it'll be too late then if you've not made it right. More than fame, wealth or desire, more than all this world's attire, more than anything in my life, I've got to make it. Take my possessions, great and small. Take my family, you can have it all, but more than anything in this life, I've got to make it. Good is all I've come to know. 
Good song, man. Gene, come on up. Sing. That is a real good song. You know, if we can keep our faith, while well, we will make it. And that's what we have to bear in mind. And it's hard sometimes, but we can do it. I remember standing at my daddy's bedside And the tears filled up the wrinkles on his face As I held his withered hand, he smiled and whispered Child, I'm going to live in a better place I'll have a Remember standing at my dad. 
good when we never hurt again, won't it? Thirteen. Brother Mitchell, I was thinking that service last night, I felt so good. Sister Mitchell, when I got down to pray, we just about sung too long, Brother Rose, and about two minutes to twelve when I got down to pray, it seemed like it was just an humble, humble spirit ever was here when we was down praying. I just felt so good. I appreciate them services like that. Reach them up. Bless her, Jesus. I just thank the Lord for what I feel in my Bless soul tonight. I want to do everything that I can for my Savior. I thought for the last two weeks the prayers that I prayed, he's answered them. I've got more before him than I believe with all my heart that he's going to move. But I just think what keeps rolling over in my mind is when I had a problem <clears throat> that no one else could help me, he did. Amen. Air in the wee hours of the morning, he'd come to me. Oh, I'm just so glad for my Savior tonight. And I don't want nothing here to hinder me. I'll try to say it I can <laughs> I have no castle, no earthly king. But my cabin will do Oh, I love it in the old city
something tonight. Why don't you just lift your hands and pray. Went and got up and walked out the door, and I know why he does it, because you can't stand to be where there's conviction. Just pray for him a special prayer right now that God will continue to deal with him. And he'll come back in, that he'll give his life to God, to bring his life straight now. Pray a special prayer for Wenton and for Joanne right now. Would you do that? Pray a very special prayer for him. And God can use them in a great way. If they just yield to Him, pray a special prayer right now.
God have his way. And again, I want to say that this altar is open. If God speaks to your heart, you see your need to pray. You ought to come and pray. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise Joanne, sing. Come on, sing. Yeah, sing. Come on. You know, I hate seeing anybody run from the Lord, but Mitch, it's dangerous. It's a very dangerous thing. I know we went down before church, went down Winton's house, and Brother Rose White even asked him to come to church. He said, I reckon we're going to church with you tonight. And I, I believe the Lord's working with him. He's wanting to save him because Winton was a, he was a good worker for the Lord, and he, and he could sing, and, and really people would feel good, and, and I, I would love to see him saved again. I'd hate to see him lost. Praise the Lord. Bertie. Young people come up and sing a couple then and we'll have Brother Mitchell's preach. Well, who is this that I see coming out of the wilderness, dressed in robes of white, leaning on her beloved? Who is this that I see coming out of the wilderness, this church, the bride of Christ and her groom? Well, her 
her journey had been long, and of time she had grown weary, and it seems many times there was no way she could have been, for she's been persecuted, and by loved ones all forsaken, yet she keeps pressing on. Well, I've been a soldier in God's mighty army since many long years ago. Oh, 
Let's all raise our hands and ask the Lord to bless Brother Mitchell and I real good. Bless it, Jesus, Father God, we come Jesus before you, Lord, come tonight, before Lord. you once again. God, we ask that you Lord, I ask God that your will be done in the remaining part of the bless service. Him, God, we Lord, ask, Lord, that you bless the Lord and anoint the reading of the word. God, anoint me to say no more, no less than what you'd have me to say. Lord, without you, we're failures. Without you, we can do nothing. God, let your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. The song said, I feel like running the last mile home. And I do feel like running the last mile home. And I personally believe that we're in the last mile, the last leg of the way. I really do. I realize tonight that nobody knows the date or the hour. But I also know that the, all of the signs point to the soon coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I want to say this tonight. We ought to feel like running forward in other words running that last mile home i would I, there used to be a song that used to say talk about being willing to crawl all the way home or the rest of the way home and brother rose i would be willing to do that whatever it takes to make it in i've got to make it in because i've done and read the last two chapters of the book i know the things that god has prepared for them that love him and them that will live for him and i also know what's prepared for those that reject him and turn him away and so uh, I feel like running the last mile home because I personally believe that we're coming down at the, end of the, at the end of the way. I really do. Amen. I thank God tonight because I have felt his good spirit here tonight in this service. We haven't, there hasn't been a lot of shouting. I, want, I, I know that. But uh, it's not all in the shout. I know that the Lord has been here tonight. I have felt his presence, and I'm sure that just about everybody in this building has felt the spirit of the Lord and not felt his presence and aren't you glad tonight that he said if there's two or three that's gathered out in my name there am I in the midst and you know what God has never not one time has he ever failed his people not ever has he ever failed to meet out with people when they gathered out if there was only two or three if they came out in the name of the Lord then the Lord was always there and I know that there's a lot more here tonight than two or three and I know that just about everybody here tonight no doubt came out in the name of the Lord you have your Bibles turned to uh Psalms chapter, uh, I believe, uh, it's chapter 62, and then I'm going to, I'm going to, first of all, in Second Chronicles chapter 7, I'm going to read a couple of verses of Scripture from both of these passages of Scripture tonight. If I was going to title this message tonight, it would be entitled, Power Belongs to God, and power truly does belong to God, and also, the passages of Scripture that I'm going to read to you tonight doesn't only speak of God's power, but it also speaks of God's mercy. And so power belongs to God, and mercy also belongs to God. Here in Second Chronicles chapter 7, this is a very familiar passage of Scripture, beginning at verse 12. The Bible said, And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night, and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer, and have chosen this place to thyself for an house of sacrifice. The Lord goes on and he says, If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Over here in Psalms chapter 62, two verses of Scripture, Verse 11 and 12, God has spoken once, twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. Power belongeth unto God. Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy. Now think about this. Power belongs to God, and also unto God belongs mercy. He goes on to say, For thou renderest to every man according to his works. Thou renderest to every man according to his work. Power belongs to God, and mercy belongs to God. I thought today when I was kind of going over this passage of Scripture, I thought about we're entering into the year 1989. This is the first day of the year. And I thought about I believe I said something about this this morning. I maybe mentioned it last night or this morning, how that 
as we enter into 1989, we really don't know what lays ahead, Brother Rose. We don't know uh, the sorrows that we're going to face. We don't know the joys that we're going to face. And I was thinking, I believe this past year in 1988, I preached three funerals, and all three of them was in this area down here. Sister Tussie going on to meet the Lord, to be with the Lord there, and Sister May Stiles, she went on out to be there with the Lord. The young man that was uh, uh, killed there, uh, the Bailey boy, and I, I thought all of these uh, these funerals that I preached, they 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 was great uh, sorrow in each and every one of them. And I, I mean, you know, a lot of times there's sorrow there because we know that we're losing a, a loved one, somebody that's dear to us. But I also thought this coming year, I don't know whose funeral that I'll be preaching and. Uh, somebody might even be preaching my funeral as far as I know. I don't know. But there's one thing that I know for sure tonight that power belongs to God. And there's another thing that I know for sure also that mercy belongs to the Lord. And power and mercy belong to the Lord here. You see, uh, uh, power belongs to God. God, he's the origin and the, and the source of all power there. And I thought when I was going over this today, here, uh, the one who existed before all else, in other words, uh, and the one who created the world, praise the Lord, uh, and the one who holds all power in the palm of his hand here, uh, that we're talking about, and hung the stars in the moon out into the, uh, to the sky there, praise God, uh, and the one here that uh, hangs uh, the stars out there and holds all power in the palm of his hand, uh, uh, glory to God, to him belongs, the Bible says, Oh, power there. And yet I thought when I was going over this today, uh, uh, God, he has all power. All power belongs to God. Uh, and yet God takes the time to look down upon individuals today. Uh, the Bible said, What art thou that man or that you're mindful of man? Uh, in other words, God, uh, even though he's a God of all power, uh, he's looking down in this building tonight. Uh, and he's mindful of you and he's mindful of me tonight. Uh, and I thought, what a goal that some of you uh, that Set under the sound of my voice tonight. Uh, God is mindful of you. Uh, and that's a reason while ago uh, and that you can feel conviction. Uh, and that's a reason God uh, was speaking to hearts while ago. Uh, yes, he's a God of power, uh, but he's a God of mercy, and he's a God of love. And that's the very reason that God uh, looked down in this place tonight and dealt with your heart uh, because he's not only a power of God, but he's a power of mercy also. He's a power, a God of power, but He's a God of mercy. God, the, 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 the origin of all power. All power belongs to God. The one that spoke the universe into existence. The one that set the earth on the axles that makes it turn and hung the stars in the moon out into the galaxy. The God that, that was before all else. He's a God of mercy also and He looks down on man and he has compassion and he deals with man's heart and I felt that tonight I look back and I could see uh, people kind of hanging their head because God's spirit uh, was bidding them to pray God's spirit was pricking at their heart uh, that's the kind of God that we're serving uh, God is a God of all power uh, but he's a God of mercy he's a God of love uh, and that's the very reason that uh, he has visited, visited us tonight not just because he's the God of power but because also he's a God of mercy the God of mercy I was reading this passage of scripture today other scripture kept coming to my mind and I thought about God is a God of power, but He's also a God of mercy. And God takes this power, and because of His love and because of His mercy, He uses it to benefit men. He uses that power because of His mercy. I mean, He's got the power to where He can say, that's the end of it, let it go, and just turn what's left into eternal punishment. But God's not that kind of a God. He uses the power that he has today and he couples it with mercy to, for the benefit of mankind. Uh, Brother Rose, I thought about uh, there uh, today, this little widow woman there. Uh, praise God that during a famine in Israel's day, uh, a great famine, and she was gathering two sticks. Uh, uh, praise the Lord to gather them to fix a little of uh, what meal she had left uh, to where her and her son could eat it and die. Uh, but God had other plans. Uh, God sent the man of God 
God. And he told her there, he said, bring me a glass of water. And when she went to get the water, he hollered again, so wait a minute, uh, bring me a little cake of bread also. And she turns around, she said, I have none. All I've got is a handful of meal. All I've got is a little handful of meal. I'm going to fix it for me and my son, uh, that we can eat it and die. Uh, glory to God. But the man of God said, uh, are you going to do as I said? Uh, because thus saith the word of God, uh, God's power uh, was coupled with mercy. Uh, God took the little handful of meal and he multiplied it. And every day uh, that that little woman went back to the bowl of meal, uh, there was meal there. Uh, why? Because power and mercy was coupled together. And we see the same thing in operation today. Power and mercy coupled together. You think about what I'm saying. She said, I'm going to eat it, fix it, and we're going to eat it and die. But God was saying, I've got the power to multiply the meal. And I've got the mercy and the love to do something about the predicament. And God says the same thing to his people today. Uh, you might say, I've got problems today. I want you to know something today, uh, that God has a power and he has a compassion and the love and the mercy uh, uh, to do something about it. Uh, uh, you might be sick in body, uh, uh, glory to God, but he's able to heal. He has a power to heal uh, and he will heal. Uh, uh, you might have family problems, uh, uh, but I want you to know he's able uh, uh, to work it out. You might have financial problems, uh, uh, but God is able to do something about it it uh, because he's a God of power a uh, glory to God and not only is he a God of power but he's also a God of mercy God is able to do something about it and God will do something if we'll let him do it you see that's the whole point right there God is all power power the scripture said belongs to to God but mercy also belongs to God and so when you take power and mercy and you couple them together I mean that's all you need I'm telling you tonight that God is all you need or you might say I need a new Cadillac or I need a great big mansion or a farm or an automobile but I'm saying tonight that God is everything that we need <laughs> And because he's got power, glory to God, he's a God of power. And coupled with that power is mercy. And so God is all I need. Whoa! I said God is all that you need, glory to God. If you get God in your life and you live for God, that's all that you need, glory to God. And because when you take power and you take mercy and you put it together, that's all that any man or woman needs. That's all that we need is God in our life because power belongs to God and then when you got God in your life there's mercy there and learning it's going to work out for you good because the Bible said all things all things work to the good of them that love the Lord I have never seen God fail one time and you might say, I've lived for God and bad things happen to me. If I'll tell you one thing, if you live for God and bad things happen to you, if you'll be patient and you'll walk with God and you make up your mind you're going to be faithful with God, or regardless, in the end it'll turn out for your good. I've never seen it fail. I said it'll turn out for your good. If you'll be faithful to Him, He'll be faithful to you. belongs to the Lord. Power belongs to God. God has always demonstrated His power by taking and coupling it with mercy and helping His people along the way. Elijah was a man that went to the woman with a barrel of meal. Elisha's was Elijah's pro protege there. And later on in life, Elisha, another widow woman comes to Elisha. And she said, my husband was one of the prophets. And now he's dead, and I've got two sons, and I'm head over heels in debt. And the creditors, they're going to come, and they're going to take my son. And they're going to sell him to be slaves, in other words. And you know, the man of God said, what do you got in the house? 
she said, nothing but a little cruise of oil. I'm talking about power coupled with mercy. Nothing but a little cruise of oil. And the man of God, he said, you go and you buy a vessel, not a few vessels, but buy all, every one you can get your hand on. And then you take them in the house and you close the door. And you begin to pour. That's power coupled with mercy. And because she started pouring from that little cruise of oil, and she filled up one vessel, and then she filled up another and another. Uh, praise God, she kept pouring until everything in the house was full of oil. Uh, praise God, that's power uh, coupled with mercy. Uh, I'm saying tonight that God is all we need uh, because power uh, belongs to God and mercy belongs to God. He's all we need. God is all that we need. There's another place in the Bible in the New Testament where a little widow woman from a small town called Man, she had one son. And in those days, the widow, the mother, depended on the son. That was her livelihood. And for him to die out or be gone, it meant almost certain death for her and, and, and her son died in the funeral there was a funeral the funeral process marching out of the city but Jesus came by and he seen this little woman weeping and he had compassion on her you're familiar with the rest of the story that's power coupled with mercy that's power coupled with mercy and that's exactly what we need to recognize as we go into this 19 and 89. We need to believe and we need to stand on the fact that God, that power belongs to God. And that God, He's going to want the one that will go before us. And He's the one that will smooth out the way. If we'll trust in Him, if we'll let Him be the Lord of our life, glory to God, and we'll put our trust in Him as we go down through 19 and 89. Whatever sorrow that we have to face, He'll see us through it. Whatever joy that comes our way, He'll be the author of it. And we'll trust in Him, glory to God, because He is a God of power and He's a God of mercy. And I can go down through 19 and 89 believing that whatever it's going to be is going to be because He's going to keep his hand on us glory to God and he's going to bless us if we'll put our trust in him because power belongs to God Amen. power and mercy coupled together what else do we need I don't need a jet plane to fly me from one place to another I don't need a bankroll big enough to choke a horse. I don't need to drive a new Cadillac. But I need God in my life. I need to feel the Spirit of God. I need to know that God is with me because power belongs to God. Power belongs to God. What else do we need? What else do we need as we go down through this 19 and 89 because power belongs to the Lord? This passage of Scripture, back over in Chronicles, Solomon, the Lord was talking to Solomon there. Solomon prayed. God answered, and he was talking back to Solomon. And God told him there, he said, whatever happens, he said, if they'll humble themselves and pray, he said, it'll all be over with. You see, that's the key right there. Power belongs to God. Power is coupled with mercy. You see, here God said I will hear from heaven he said I'll hear from heaven in other words no matter somebody might say well I, I just don't feel worthy and there's a lot of people feel that way and when you look at it from that point of view none of us is really worthy of what God has done for us the blessings he's blessed us with I mean we're not really worthy but when we look at it when God looks down at us and then when we begin to humble ourselves and we recognize that power belongs to God that power is coupled with mercy there and then we begin to humble ourselves and pray that the Bible said here turn again to the Lord God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob and he would return to you and I thought a while ago 
Uh, Brother Rose, more than anything else in this life, uh, the church world today, not just this one little particular group of people, uh, but the church world as a whole today needs to turn to God uh, because if the church today would turn to the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, uh, I'll tell you that God would turn back to his people uh, and we would recognize that power belongs to God uh, and that that power is coupled with mercy. uh, And then we would recognize also uh, uh, that we could do all things through him that strengthen us. Glory to God. Uh, we wouldn't have to enter into this 1989 uh, uh, with blindfold on, not knowing, uh, uh, stumbling around in the darkness. Glory to God. Uh, because we could believe that God is going to see us through it all. Because power belongs to God. But that power is coupled with mercy. He said he would hear an answer from heaven. And then, you know, here's what he said he would do. He said, I would forgive their sins. He said, I'll hear an answer for heaven and I'll forgive their sins. You see, the world today, the church, in other words, the church is sort of the life and stock. I know we went through some of this this morning in our Sunday school. The world mocks and laughs at the church. The church goes out and they try to rebel against some of the the, the laws of the land, such as abortion and the different laws of the land. And the law comes along and locks them up. And then the news media, they have a great big blast out of it and they laugh and they make fun. And that's the way that it's always been. But I want you to know one thing today, that the God's people today... If they would turn back to God and ask God to forgive them of their sins, a uh, glory to God, and we could recognize that power, all power, not just a little power, uh, belongs to God, and that that power is coupled with mercy, uh, uh, then people wouldn't laugh so freely. A uh, uh, glory to God. They would recognize that God is in the midst. A uh, uh, glory to God. We need enough of the power of God today. Uh, uh, this neighborhood here needs to know uh, that there's something here on this corner uh, other than just a little brick building. Uh, Uh, that's been here for quite a few years. Uh, uh, They need to know uh, that God's power is in this place, that God's spirit uh, is in this place. Glory to God. And I'll tell you, when we turn to God again the way that we ought to, and we recognize that power belongs to God, then people will begin to recognize that. You know what? The world will always laugh in a lukewarm church. They'll always poke fun at people when they're just playing religion. Glory to God. But power belongs to God. Power belongs to God. But God goes on there. Not only did he say he would forgive their sins, but he said he would heal their land. And that, 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 that means a lot more than just healing the land, as, as naturally speaking. That means bringing it back together, bringing it back to God. And uh, the land in America needs to be healed today, not just the, the, I'm not talking about a drought or a famine or a flood. I'm not talking about an earthquake or anything like that. Uh, but the ground that I'm talking about is the ground that has been lost uh, because of the sin, because of such things as homosexuality and abortion, murder, and all of the different crimes in the land today. America needs to be healed today. And God said, if my people have called by my name will humble themselves and pray. And he said that they would turn from their wicked ways there, uh, that he would forgive their sin, and that he would heal their land. That's what we need today. Uh, because God is a merciful God. And if we turn again to the Lord God, uh, glory to God, he would heal the land today. He would heal the land today because he's a God of power. Power belongs to the Lord, but that power is coupled with mercy. And that makes all of the difference in the world. That makes all the difference in the world because power does indeed belong to God, but the power that God has is coupled with mercy. And you know, a lot of times... We look around and we'll say, well, I'm one individual. What can I do? I'm just one person. What can I do? You might look at somebody in your family and you might think, well, my husband's not saved and my wife's not saved. and I'm just one person. And so I, it's no use to me trying it anyway until the other comes in. But I want you to know something that we have to start someplace because power belongs to God, but mercy is coupled with power. But the Bible said that verse of Scripture that I read to you said that God renders to every man according to his works. And so I can't go and stand in the judgment 
and I can't say, God, I didn't serve you and work for you because Ann didn't do it. Uh, she couldn't do it for me. Uh, uh, Jimmy, you couldn't go and stand in the judgment and say, God, I didn't do anything because Patty didn't want it done. Uh, because power belongs to God. Uh, and God renders a man uh, according to his works, not according to your companion's works, uh, not according to your children's works, uh, uh, but according to her own works. Uh, he's going to render unto us our just dues. Uh, uh, God is a God of power. And that power is coupled with mercy uh, but I want to go one step further and tell you that God is a God of judgment also and everything is going to be brought into judgment Amen. and you might say I'm one person I can't change it I'm only one man one woman one boy or one girl it's got to start someplace it's got to start someplace you see you're going to stand in a judgment for your own individual self Janet will never have to be counted guilty because of something that David done or vice versa. Because we're going to stand in the judgment and God is going to render to us. I read the scripture to you. According to our work, not according to somebody else's work. And so I want to say this tonight. God is a God of power. Power belongs to God. That power in this day and age that we're living in is coupled with mercy. If it wasn't for the mercies of God, Brother Rose, it's no telling where me and you would be tonight. If it wasn't for the mercies of God, a lot of us in this building tonight would be no doubt six foot under the ground. We would have already went out. Somebody might say, well, you don't die till your time comes. You shorten your days by your disobedience. And so a lot of us today, if it wasn't for the mercies of God, would be six foot under the ground tonight. Maybe went out and lost or sold in eternal punishment someplace. But God is a God of mercy. And you've got to start someplace. There's got to be a starting place. This is the year, 19, the first day of 1989. And what a day this would be to start working for God, living for God. What a day it would be. Power belongs to God. You might say, I can't live it. Yes, you can live it. You might say the pull of the world is too much. No, it's not. God's grace is sufficient. Power belongs to God. That power includes keeping power. Power belongs to God. Church, I want you to bow your head and begin to pray. Play something on the music, if you would. Pray with me just for a minute, would you, church? Precious Heavenly Father, we come before you, God, this evening. Lord, I ask you in Jesus' name, God, that everyone that's in this building tonight, God, just back to it on you. God, that don't know you're the free part of sin, and God, deal with their hearts. God, I know belongs to you, but God, I also know that mercy is in your hand. And I know that even though that all power belongs to you, God, that you're a merciful God. And God, I'm asking you right now in Jesus' name that you begin to speak to hearts. God, begin to speak to hearts here tonight. Begin to speak to hearts. While the church tonight is praying, keep on praying. If you're in here tonight and you backslid on God, why don't you let this be the night that you make a start for God? Why don't you let this be the night that you make up your mind and say, I've got to make it. I've got to live for God. Power belongs to God. Mercy is coupled with power, but there's a judgment also. How about it tonight? Would you get up out of your seat? And make your way to this altar and let me pray with you tonight. Would you do that? How about it tonight? Jesus loves you. That's the very reason that God came down tonight and visited us in the way that he did. It's because of his, his mercy and because of his love. That's the reason you can feel the drawing power. It's because of that mercy. How about it tonight? Would you come? Would you get up out of your seat right now and come? Would you? Just make up your mind and come. Come on, church, everybody that will. Get fall into this altar and begin to pray. Pray around your seat. Come on and pray. 
I'm not closing this altar. I'm not closing this altar call tonight. How about it tonight? Would you come? Would you get up and come and let us pray with you tonight? God is a very merciful God. Mercy coupled with power. Would you come tonight? Would you come tonight? Hallelujah. Pray, church. And you know the reason why that the same road leads back again? Because of mercy. Because of mercy. Today we're serving a God that has all power, a God of power. But today that power is coupled with mercy. On out in the future, when the wrath of God is going to be poured out upon this earth, that mercy is not going to be there the way that it is today. Today is indeed the day of salvation. And this is the day to serve God. It's no doubt in my mind that this is the day of salvation and this is the day to serve God. Sure, power belongs to God, but today it's coupled with mercy. But what about when power, all power belongs to God and the mercy is not there? That's something to think about. That is something to think about. I thank God tonight for everyone that come out to be with us. Thank God because we felt his good spirit tonight. 
I know that he's been in the midst tonight. And again, I wanted to say that we appreciate everybody that came out tonight. Got a good crowd. Thank the Lord for all of us. And I wonder tonight if somebody would like to testify. Anybody like to testify before we change the service? If you get them to come to church, they get saved. I believe that. I really do. I, I called last Sunday morning and woke them up to come to church because they told me, said, you wake me up when we go to church. And I called them about 8 o'clock and woke them up, but they still didn't, didn't show up. But don't you ever tell me to wake you up if you, and you'll come to church because I'll wake you up. I don't care how sleepy you are. <laughs> That's for sure. But I believe that God will save them. And Jimmy said he didn't feel like he could do anything for God. I mean, he's doing a lot right now. I mean, being here and praying and the burden that he has, and uh, the being faithful to the church and to God, I mean, he's done a tremendous amount right now. And I believe that he'll even do more. I believe that God will use him in a greater way because of his attitude and his faithfulness. I really do. Amen. Somebody over here started to testify. Go ahead, Brother Moore. anniversary the 25th of this month the 25th of January three years ago is when we opened the doors to the church and started having services here and it's been a great three years and I don't know if Brother Moore has missed what one Sunday in the three years that we've been here one Sunday morning that he's missed in the three years that the church has been here and that is that that's that's some kind of a miracle because <laughs> I've missed more than that myself not deliberately missed but I've been on vacation a couple of times and different things like that but I really appreciate Brother and Sister Moore. And that's, that's really something. One Sunday since he's been coming here. Somebody else testify. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glad to be Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless him, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe Jack is going to make it all the way this time. Because before Jackie got back in this last time, there's a song that Lurleene sings about her companion being saved. And she was sitting there, and the Spirit of the Lord hit me, and, and the Spirit of the Lord said, Tell her. Tell her that she'll sing it again. And I told her, I said, Lurleene, you'll sing that song again. About two weeks later, Jackie was back in real good. And I believe he's going to stay in this time. Amen. I really do. Praise God. Somebody else. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good way to start the year, that's for sure. Somebody else? Anybody? Amen. 
You know, I believe there's a lot of people that's walking around today because they had a good praying mother, a praying dad, a praying companion. I believe that the, that the God's mercy has spared many of a person because somebody was praying for that person. But one day, like I said, today we have power and we have it coupled with mercy. But what's it going to be like when mercy is no longer there? An old song that says, who will pray for me when mama's gone? Of course, that could be applied to anybody. But one of these days, if there's nobody to pray for you and that mercy is not there, it's going to be a sad thing. It's going to be a sad thing. Somebody else like to testify. Come on, everybody pray, hallelujah. Praise God. Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, let your will be done. God, in Jesus' name, Lord, let your will be done. Let your will be done. God, save someone tonight. Oh, God, in Jesus' name, Lord, let your will be done. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, God, let your will be done. Oh, God. God, let it be done, let your will be done, let your will be done. Oh, God, in Jesus' name. Lord, let it be so, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, church, obey the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. God, let your will be done. Oh, God, let your will be done, Jesus. Amen.